On today's show, how normalizing relations with Cuba will affect the American auto industry, Jeep comes out with a sound system that even works underwater, and Honda has two really big reveals coming at the Detroit Auto Show. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for December 18, 2014. Honda is going to be busy at next month's Detroit Auto Show. The company will reveal the production version of the new Acura NSX. Unfortunately, no details, not just yet. In the meantime, we'll just have to drool over these teaser shots. Honda will also unveil its FCV, or fuel cell vehicle concept. Honda says it will have over a 300 mile range and will go on sale in 2016. The Jeep Wrangler is one of the most rugged off-road capable vehicles you can buy and now it's got a sound system to match its tough lifestyle. The company teamed up with Alpine Electronics to equip the car with a new 8-speaker audio system and subwoofer. To test its durability, engineers covered the speakers in mud and even submerged them in water to make sure it all works properly. And since many Wrangler drivers don't use a top, the audio system was developed to not lose quality with the top down. The new Alpine system is available for the 2015 Wrangler. If you're in the market for a new car, here's a cool new app to help you. State Farm just released Car Capture that works with both Apple and Android phones. If you see a car you're interested in, Just take a picture of the back of the vehicle and Car Capture provides you with all the info. It also shares reviews, the value, and even dealer locations from Edmunds.com. And of course, State Farm will provide you with an insurance quote. You can download the app for free from iTunes or from Google Play. Still to come, what American car makers will find now that Cuba is starting to open up to them how Formula E is trying to get fans engaged with the sport, and did you know there's only three airbag companies in the whole world? Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. With viewership down for racing series all over the world and major sponsors pulling out, the powers that be have to figure out new ways to draw fans in and keep them engaged. Well, the folks over in the all-electric Formula E racing series have come up with what they call Fan Boost. Before each race, fans can vote for their favorite driver and the top three vote-getters are awarded the boost. By hitting a paddle on the back of the steering wheel, battery power goes from about 150 kilowatts to 180, or about a 20% increase. The boost is applied to both cars that the driver uses during the race and lasts for a total of five seconds each time. Formula E hopes the drivers will interact more with their fans to win their vote and ultimately keep them watching the series. Now, I'm not saying this is the greatest idea, but it is a unique and fresh approach, and that's what racing needs right now. President Obama made big news last night announcing that the United States will normalize diplomatic relations with Cuba. That's prompted some analysts to predict that American car companies will now be able to sell cars in Cuba. Let me set the record straight. Cubans can't afford new cars, not even the cheap ones from China. Cuba is the second poorest country in the region, second only to Haiti. And they're poor? because their communist top-down command economy has failed them miserably, just as it's failed any country that's tried to use that system. Unfortunately, most Cubans believe it's the U.S. embargo that's been holding them back. And that's why getting rid of that embargo will finally get them to realize it's their system, not the embargo, that makes them one of the poorest countries in the world. Normalizing relations with Cuba will mainly get American car collectors to flock to the island looking for some true classics. Right now, Cuba makes it illegal to export those classics, but money talks. And that's where we're going to see the biggest change in Cuba, at least from an automotive standpoint. 
Anyway, that's how I see it, and I welcome your viewpoints. Hey, speaking of your viewpoints, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Ramon Rivera says, a new engine from Volvo meeting future European regulations. Sure, we will also see Geely using it too, right? Well, Geely will probably not get the same engine, Ramon. They seem to be trying to keep both companies fairly separate. But you can be sure Geely will probably get access to all the intellectual property needed to do an engine like that on its own. To Chris, to Cross wants to know, how is only appearing at three auto shows where consumers get to know products firsthand going to make things better at Volvo? Wouldn't you want to be at as many auto shows as you can? I think for mass market brands that might be true, but as a smaller company, Volvo is better off trying to pinpoint its marketing message to potential buyers rather than display them at secondary auto shows where the vast majority of the public will never buy a Volvo. SeaTech says, did I miss something or will the new Fiat Doblo be offered in the US as well as Europe? Well, maybe you missed the fact that the Doblo is called the Pro Master City, which is going on sale in the US as we speak. Andy noticed something. Didn't Volvo come out with a see-through A-pillar a few years ago on a concept vehicle? Wonder why it did not get off the ground. Looks to me it would be cheaper than video cameras. Good memory, Andy. Volvo did show that, but that thing was going to be an expensive manufacturing nightmare. Lex opines, Takata should bear all the cost of the airbag recalls. How many airbag suppliers are there to supply these devices to the automotive industry? Is there any substantial technological differences from one supplier to another? Lex, did you know there are only three airbag suppliers in the world? Takata, TRW, and AutoLeave. And there are significant design differences between them. You can't simply plop an AutoLeave or TRW bag in place of a defective Takata one. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments, and please keep them coming. And remember, on AutoLine After Hours tonight, we'll be handing out presents and coal for the best and the worst of the things that happened in the global automotive industry in 2014. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.